Hey lawyer friends, I'm Coach Law and today I'm going to bring you three keys to managing legal assistance that most lawyers miss. So the first key to managing your legal assistant well is to connect their work to the firm's larger goals. I don't know if you've ever had trouble hiring, but nobody today just wants a job. Nobody wants to have a job and make money without there being some kind of meaning connected to it. This is a you know millennial thing, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Whoever started this um, goes way further than we'll ever acknowledge because this is something that, uh, that everybody inherently wants just as a human being. So how do you make that work when you're trying to manage your legal assistant and make them just a trusted partner in your day-to-day -day work? Uh, the way you do that is be really clear with them about your goals for the firm, for the company. You have to communicate that clearly. Obviously, if you don't have them, well, you got to start there. But once you have that in place and you clearly communicate that and they can almost make fun of you for how much you've communicated that uh, because you've told them so many times, then connect it to their day-to-day -day work. Even the most minute tasks say, hey, that connects to this goal that we're both working on together or that the whole team is working on together. You have to make that connection because without making that connection, there's no day-to-day -day meeting. There's no excitement for, you know, menial tasks or things they have to do. And even if it is boring and menial, at least then they know in the back of their minds, this is how I am helping to advance the firm. The cause is being moving, moving forward, even though this doesn't seem like a very fancy, you know, way to, to move it forward. I am helping advance the team. And connecting your legal assistant's day-to-day -day work to the firm's larger vision and goals can start all the way back in the hiring process. That's something that you can really sell as part of asking someone to join your team and trying to get really good talent is to really implant that meaning and that larger vision to them in that hiring process. The beauty of this really comes when you get to know them and what their career, career goals are as well. And those are things that you can connect to the, to the firm's vision and goals as well. When they see how they are personally advancing, just even in their day-to-day -day work, uh, when you're when you're giving them tasks and moving the firm's vision and goals along as well. But when you can get them to see, oh, this is how it connects to my actual career and my growth um, in, my, in my professional life personally, not just as an organization, that's when you really have mastered this one. Number two is get buy-in. They have to be bought in. They have to be bought in um, and this is something that, again, you can start working in in the hiring process, but you have to be able to integrate them into your team. One big key to getting someone's buy-in is giving them the real reasons for doing the work. Merely saying, I, because I said so, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work with parenting either, but that's a whole other thing. So you have to Build this into the process from the moment you first meet the person. It goes all the way back to the hiring process, but certainly you've got to follow through once this person is on your team. You have to be able to, um, to show how important something is. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to show some appreciation for when they're doing something well. Don't underestimate giving praise either directly um, or just you know even more broadly and publicly uh, for things that directly relate to the purpose and of the firm. If you can build them a picture and give them a vision of what it looks like when, uh, when a job is well done and the time that that saves an attorney and then show how much time the attorney is able to spend on you know, a more legal type of um, activity that's just lawyer based, then that can give a really big impact to your legal assistant. You've got to be able to get their buy in and show how that they show how they can um, save you time and save your clients money, because that is going to result in more business for you and more reward for them. So the third key to managing your legal assistant that a lot of lawyers miss 
is giving them the proper authority. So this is where we need to kind of get ethical for, a, for just a minute. Gonna get ethical, ethical. I honestly don't know how else I'm gonna get your attention when I start talking about American Bar Association ethics uh, model rules. So there you go. ABA rule 5.3. Uh, sub C says a lawyer shall be responsible for the conduct of their legal assistant. That would be a violation of the professional rules of conduct if engaged by a lawyer. Okay, so why do we even mention that? Well, because really the big thing about number three, uh, about giving proper authority, is being really clear with your legal assistant that what you do isn't just a reflection of me or something that could embarrass me. What you're doing needs to be as though I am doing it. And so I need to give my legal assistant not just the proper tools and know-how, but the proper authority to get that done. Just so I don't bore you anymore here, I'll put a link to the ABA rules down in the comments so you can take a look. Let your legal assistant know that if they are doing it, saying it, writing it, sending it, it's the same as if you are as the attorney. Doing that will give your legal assistant the kind of gravity or serious uh, kind of critical thinking just on a day-to-day -day basis where they feel empowered and they know that you're backing them up. So when you're delegating the proper authority to them, make sure that they have a sense of gravity about it but make it a sense of excitement that that means that they are a part of the team. They're just as much a part of the team as you are in terms of getting to the firm's goals, helping your clients, and making a difference in your community. Giving your legal assistant the proper authority, of course, requires guardrails. That's what the ABA rules say, and that's what everybody, every lawyer kind of knows. You know this inherently. Give them guardrails. Um, but let them be the ones to help determine kind of how to propel the vehicle down the road. And don't take back the authority either. Be really careful that once you grant that authority, you keep it kind of in their bucket, you know, in their space and in their realm of responsibility. Don't step on it and try to take it back just because, oh, you know, I can do it a little bit faster, a little bit better today. No, let them know uh, that this is important and they need to hang on to it and they need to be the ones to move it forward. Now, let's get clear. The three keys to successfully managing your legal assistant that a lot of lawyers miss are connecting their work to the firm's larger goals, getting their buy-in, and giving them the proper authority. Once you enact these three steps and start practicing them, then managing your legal assistant staff is going to get so much easier and you're gonna be way ahead of most other small law firms. So if you wanna see more helpful small firm lawyer videos uh, in the future, just subscribe, like this video, I really appreciate it. And let's keep working together in the future. This is Coach Law, I'll see you next time.